One word to describe COVID. Um, well, okay, wait, wait a second. Um, wait, wait, this is hard. Um, my word is lonely. COVID is lonely. I just remember thinking, wow, we get a, you know, a whole day off of school and maybe we'll even get the next week off. And I remember my friends and I saying, wow, we're just going to be able to hang out a lot more and take a few weeks of school off. And boy, were we wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's not just that I didn't get to see my friends or whatever, because like, honestly, like, who cares, you know, like, it doesn't really matter. Just sometimes when you're locked up in your house, just in your room and it's hard to keep morale up and say hey there's going to be an end game to this eventually just stay strong and every time it seems that we're getting just a little bit closer something else happens like a new strain of covid and it it hurts your mental but you just got to try to stay optimistic at some level you know it's sort of like we're experiencing loneliness in a new way if that makes any sense you know it's sort of like, you know, I mean, I guess that's why people said they had a lot of self-reflection during this time, you know? I've been not trying to distract myself, but just sort of trying to focus myself on a lot of different things and just sort of not let my mind wander off into pessimism. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally get that. I mean, like, you know, during this time, you start to realize the things you don't like about yourself when you're with yourself all the time, you know? It, it makes me think of, like, when you see, you know, a photo of yourself and you look at it for way too long and you start to realize all the things that you hate, you know? And, um, yeah, it's just sort of like that. Um, and I guess people want to change that. So, um, yeah, my word for COVID is lonely because it's so easy to feel alone right now, you know, especially if you don't try and keep those connections you had before. I realize that I sometimes act without thinking a whole lot about it beforehand. So I've done a lot of reflecting and I do believe that I'm gonna become more of a methodical uh, thinker and just take some more time with my actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's definitely true. And you know, because of quarantining and everything, I think lots of people decided to change themselves, you know? But um, anyways, before we get too depressing, let's move on. So um, I do two sports currently. I swim and play soccer. I am a professional baseball player and I play for the Seattle Mariners. And since I am around that many people, I have, I, I've been very safe outside of it because I don't want to threaten my teammates on either my soccer or my swim team. Um, I get tested about, I say, I think once every three weeks or so, just to make sure, just to be safe, because I don't want to risk the health or the safety of my teammates. Um. It was definitely difficult first, just because they didn't give us much information on what to expect. And no one really knew what was going to come out of COVID. So um, once everything kind of locked down, I didn't have a place to work out or anything like that. So that really kind of hit hard for me, where I uh, spent probably a good two, three weeks not able to do anything, which is probably the hardest. It really affected me was the beginning. During spring training, um, uh, definitely. I, I've also chosen not to go back to school since I am around that many people, even though we are being safe. I, I just don't want to risk any closures for my teammates. Playing, it's been nice just cause I've never really ever spent this much time at home ever like. <laughs> And for the past five years, I've either been traveling or playing, something like that. Almost a year, if not a year, I've been able to spend time with everyone. Just because I didn't get to play, and that's, it's been such a big part of my life. I've been playing since I was six or seven and haven't stopped since, so definitely disrupted my daily activities. But 
I'm sure we we are going to get back out there soon. I stayed in lockdown in Edinburgh, which is in Scotland. I stayed there until December, and then on December 10th, I landed here in Virginia. So yeah, I've only taken one flight. Since I just moved, I didn't really have any <laughs> any life before COVID. <laughs> um, we did go to some cafes because they were open and we only sat outside. Here, we've just been inside for the last couple of months. I saw a friend, Hannah, and then I saw a friend, Tara. But I mean, I, I hung out with friends, uh, a lot of, obviously, a lot of school activities and staying after and such. Uh, yeah, but my entire life was basically just school and friends, and generally that was around school. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's quite obvious pets are helping me right now. I was seriously considering getting a pet while I was in Edinburgh during the summer, because it was like four straight months of me being alone, and I was like, wow, I could really use a pet right now. But I held off until now, and I'm taking full advantage. You know, I think everybody in Sweden are a little bit, a little bit too chill about it all. Um, I mean, they've been, from the very start, they've been very chill, and I don't know, I've just kind of Followed along with that, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but um. <laughs> um, other than just surviving, um, I actually stopped journaling because it was just a lot. I wanted to start knitting, didn't do that. I randomly started learning hobbies, which makes me sound like a grandma, but I randomly learned how to knit. I learned how to knit, I've never been able to knit before. I, um, I had this picture booklet, not like a picture booklet, a uh, diorama set that my friend recommended. Tried to do that, but it just frustrated me so much, so I just, I've just been taking steps back to keep myself sane. I've always loved to read, but I've never really had any time for it, like, just never, and I've now, I with all my time, I've just been reading like crazy, and uh, I've just been picking up random hobbies. Again, making me sound like a grandma, but I learned how to cook. I never learned how to cook before, and now I can cook. And I feel like I'm becoming like a, a 1950s housewife. Well, I'd say right now is the perfect time to focus on yourself. Put yourself first. It's not selfish to do. It's self-preserving. Um. You should, um, do whatever maximizes your happiness, to a reasonable extent. I'd say do something creative, but don't feel forced, um, because there's, there's a lot of pressure about being productive, and it can be very toxic. So yeah, take care of yourself. I think that most people have tried their best, but it's really disappointing to see that most people are trying their best they can to stop the spread of COVID, but then some people just have a blatant disregard for stopping the spread. Well, so, especially in this area, in, you know, the country part, there's a lot of regulations that, like, they technically exist, but no one really follows them. There's a lot of people just kind of socializing whenever they want, only wearing masks if they absolutely have to. Yeah, oh, and masks are especially hard. Because whenever you call anybody out, they act like you're the worst type of person. So it's really hard to call people out. I think there's a balance that needs to be found. Like, obviously, we can't stay inside our rooms all day. That's just not healthy for our mental health. But going out, wearing a mask, and social distancing doesn't really impede your social interaction very much, if at all. And only if it's real or somewhere that's enforced. And I think I kind of like the more relaxed thing because, um, I feel like in certain parts it's so uptight that either way these, well some of these regulations aren't accomplishing much. And parents don't control their children so if their children take their masks off then a lot of the time the parents are like whatever. And honestly teenagers can be awful too because they'll walk in and do this thing where they cover their mouth with their shirt and act like that's okay. And like it's so difficult to call anybody out but I'm supposed to so. Me personally. I've really learned that 
I don't need that much socialization to be okay. Um, I mean, I need a little bit here and there or with people I'm really close friends with, but other than that, I don't need to go out with friends every single day. I can just kind of do my own thing. It's really upsetting for me to be able to do something that I've quarantined to be able to do, and then to get there, see that some people aren't even wearing their masks, which just like defeats the whole point. Like you can talk while wearing a mask. I think in the beginning, I thought this was gonna be a short-term thing. Like, okay, if everyone can just stay inside for two weeks, we could be done with this. We could be done with this, but apparently that was an impossible request. So my father has Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So in December, he was hospitalized four times. So we brought him in because he was having a reaction to medicine, but between like medicines and mini strokes and all this stuff, so yeah, that's why I was in a hospital waiting room at like the height of COVID, just waiting for my mother to come out and trying not to touch anything. Like I just sat there. Um, my life before COVID was a little rambunctious, to be honest. You know, we were we were living life, having fun, hanging out with family, friends, the whole nine yards. So it was a it was a good time before COVID. But yeah, COVID has made my dad's illness a lot more difficult because there was a time where he was healthy enough to go to doctor's appointments. And that was terrifying because you're like, God, like, you don't want him to go to doctor's appointments because you don't want him to catch something, right? But um, it, uh, it affected me in a, a bunch of ways. Like my mom got it, she was sick and in the hospital. My sister got it, she was sick and in the hospital. So it just... It, it gave us a different perspective on what we do and how to be careful from here on. But yeah, COVID's made my dad's uh, illness a lot more challenging because when he goes to doctor's appointments, you can't go. And like, you see these hospital, these nurses and these doctors, and I mean, they're walking wounded, they're tired, they're exhausted, they're running on fumes. So I see it as a daughter whose father is sick, but I also see it as a human being looking at these nurses and doctors who have been going through this for over a year. And they have to listen to these people who are like, I don't want to wear a mask and you can make me do something I don't want to do. And like these poor people, they're watching people die. I think the government was a great big stinky turd bowl and there were terrible schools and they didn't make a plan. So first of all, I'm the director of a preschool and um, when COVID hit, and we got all these new restrictions, we had to completely change our program. So, you know, I think we did, Fairfax did not so terribly, actually, on the national scale. Our temple did fantastic, and boy, once they stepped up and they stepped up, we found a way to include all our children remotely. So right off the bat, we lost half of our student body just due to people being scared to send their kids to school, so we revamped the whole program to make sure that we could stay in person if the governor put us back into phase one. So to me, it's important to be inclusive of all the kids because I really believe that the rich kids are always gonna have the opportunities that they need to do the best with what they've got because they've got so much. Okay, but not everybody's a rich kid. The learning this year has been more than twice the speed of the learning last year, even though it's, you know, um, non-stressful, every kid gets individualized attention, every kid is working at their own pace, and because of that, it's amazing. And yeah, I, I get 20 minutes with the kids, I spend like almost half of it with some of them just being social, giving them a person to talk to, reassuring them that it's okay, we're here together, you can talk to me about stuff, let's go. So we went from having 18 in a class to nine in a classroom. I think the hardest thing we've had to deal with was wearing masks all day long, um, you know, just getting used to that. And that and uh, having to distance children that have, they just gravitate towards each other. But I, you know, I think we've been doing a pretty good job of keeping them distanced at their separate tables. And uh, when they come together, they put their masks on to do an activity. So, uh, yeah, that's been, it's been pretty difficult. I think the support our temple has provided has been really good for our kids and inclusive because we make sure we don't just give the rich kids stuff and we don't just give the poor kids stuff. And then just adapting with your colleagues. 
uh, not being able to get so close together. It's hard, especially when you spend all so much time together. Um, of course, we're always trying to maintain that six feet of distance. The other thing is uh, with the parents, the parents normally come in to the uh, come into the school to pick up and drop off their kids, but they can't do that anymore. Now they have to stay outside. So hopefully we'll be getting back to some normalcy for next year. We make sure we meet every kid where they are, learning wise and emotional wise. I think it's important to get kids back in school when it's safe, yes, but I think it's much more important to let them feel supported and like their academic performance isn't as important as their personhood. I think there's a lot we could have done for kids' mental health that we didn't do. I mean, currently right now I think everyone my age is like, I want to get into college, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously my biggest priority right now is like the next step of my life because as much as theater is changing, I am also changing. So, like I, I think, you know, coming out of quarantine and COVID, and, and not like fully out, like obviously it's still around, but kind of moving into this new phase where we can call it like moving out. Like all of the uncertainty with testing, like needing to take my SAT again, but really only having having my test date canceled over and over and over again, and just having far fewer chances to take the test, get my score up where I needed where I needed it to be, and I worked like really hard to get the score that I got on my SAT, and I feel like it's within the range to get into some of my favorite schools. But now with the whole test optionals thing, I, I'm really scared. And they're just being more applicants. I'm nervous that my application is going to get lost among a bunch of people who maybe wouldn't have considered applying before, but now have. Um, I think, you know, Quarantine was such a good time, like, self-reflection and kind of like individual acknowledgement of growth or the need for growth. Uh, so obviously I'm going to move into that and I'm going to try to uh, put myself out there, like into the industry. I'm, I'm becoming an adult and this is the career I want. So. I'm gonna go to college and, you know, I'll kind of try to explore some, you know, some colleges. I had a bunch of extracurricular and volunteer opportunities that I was gonna participate in this summer and the school year, but wasn't able to because of COVID. So now I'm really nervous that I'll be more likely to get rejected from some schools because my application isn't as strong as it could have been. I want to audition as much as I can because I feel like being in shows really helps with the, the personal growth thing. Um, and like, I don't know, there's so many sides to this, but I, I, I think the main thing is I acknowledge that I'm becoming an adult and this is where my career starts. But I know that I'll never finish growing as an artist and I really want to push that. <laughs> I was really anxious at first because I got deferred from my first choice school and then I kind of started talking to everyone and I realized they were going through like the exact same thing. Like most people got deferred from their first choice. Um, so I realized it's not just me, it's not that my grades aren't good enough or 
my extracurriculars and my essays aren't good enough. It's just that schools are processing students and stuff in such a different way. And so now I'm a lot less anxious because I've done everything I can do and the rest is out of my hands. Uh, hi, my name's Lily and I'm from Ontario, Canada. I think there is some healing power in like wallowing in your sadness and despair and loneliness. I think I've found my outlet, Phoebe Bridgers, Stranger in the Alps. Um, but yeah, just like I hate, I hate when there's this mentality that there has to be a bright side to everything. I think I've really kind of been surrounded by that. Like my parents are both definitely that way. The biggest thing I learned about myself this year is probably understanding my sexuality and realizing that I like <laughs> girls um, and embracing and accepting that. I think I've really just learned like it's okay to sit and feel sad. Like, that's okay. The hardest part of the year, though, was definitely anxiety-wise. My mental health got a lot worse during COVID. Yeah, it's just, like, hard for everyone, I think. Like, after the first round of quarantine, like, after the first round of quarantine and lockdown, I found it so much harder to reach out and talk to people in real life. And I think that's definitely still affecting me now. It's just so much harder to reach out and interact and do normal everyday things. Yeah, um, I mean like, obviously not everyone's having a bad time, but I feel like most of my friends or, or people my age, um, well then again, they all have like bad mental stuff before. Um, I don't know. I at least feel like everyone I know isn't having a better time, at least. I took a lot of time for self-reflecting um, and, and took a lot of time for self-care and I realized that that's not something I really did before and I realized that I putting myself first is something that's really important. Uh, yeah, in terms of me, um, I'm doing pretty shit. <laughs> okay, look, it's not like I had the best mental health before, but man, has it gotten worse. Yeah, uh, literally everything is just so boring to me now. Like, boring and pointless. You don't have to dig your way out of it. Just because you want to dig your way out of it. Like, um, and that also goes along with that with that, you know, finding happiness in being by myself. Uh, yeah, that word you were saying, uh, monotonous, yeah. Um, shit sucks. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I literally cannot find motivation for like anything anymore. Uh, yeah, no, my friends aren't really keeping in touch. Uh, yeah, same with family. Uh, yeah, I don't really like my family, so it's fine, but, um, uh, yeah, no, my friends, nah. I only really talk to, like, three of them now. Uh, yeah, I don't really want to get into all the, like, mental health stuff, but uh, it's just annoying, and it's, it's way too much. Uh, yeah, all right. I, I hear people throw around the term toxic positivity a lot. I think that's a good, good way of describing it. But um, yeah, like if you're sad, that's like, just sit in your sadness. Like it's kind of healing. Um, yeah, let yourself cry. Let yourself like be angsty. Um, watch a sad movie listen to some sad music, um, but reach out for help if you need it. I did.
because there's nothing wrong with that and there are people that can help you. Oh God, how long has it been? Jeez. I thought it would be over in a month. <laughs> I, I, I laugh at myself now. Um, I had just had lunch with a group of 13 women, my age, once a month group, delightful people. My favorite is 93. And a different one said, what is this thing that's going around? I, like the rest of them, thought it would be over in a month. It came on as such a shock. It really did. I guess I'm one of many to feel that way. Everyone in the family was telling me, you need to hunker down, because I would still be bopping around. Um, I just couldn't believe it was going to be this serious. It feels as if I've been grounded. <laughs> oh, this thing is spreading like crazy. I was afraid almost quickly back to the 1918 pandemic. I thought, what if something like that comes around? And you know what? That's come to pass. It really has. I want that group. I miss them very much. And they're not even close, close friends. I miss seeing everybody. Uh, when I see them, they have to stand in the driveway. They won't come in or they refuse to come in. And they wear masks, even in the driveway. No hugging, no kissing, nothing. And I miss, 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 miss seeing my friends. I haven't seen Marianne in a year. I'm very lucky in that I have a him. I still have him. I haven't been able to do much reading since Pop's passed. I haven't been able to focus as well. Most of these women, by comparison, are widows, all right? I'm very lucky that I have a good partner going through this thing. And we immediately, though, thought it would be a good idea to follow the rules, hunker down. The reason I don't get too crazy with it is because I don't want my kids to undergo the stress of their mother having COVID. I know that would just be terrible for them, so that's why I try not to bitch too much. But we are getting better, and I wish they would say that more. Uh, the vaccine process has been a bit of a mess, but I tell you, if it weren't for President Trump, we'd still be waiting in the wings. And I've been listening to this Biden guy. I've got the feeling he's going to want us to keep these damn masks on forever. I mean, we're just law abiders uh, and avoid catching this thing, whatever it was. If I have worked this hard for one year, I'm not going to blow it tomorrow. I'm not going to do it. I want to live. I think that this time was just being mindful that any one experience is not the um, universal experience during this time. I, I just, yeah, I, I realize that throughout because I, obviously each person is a very unique experience in life regardless, but I think this pandemic, it's very easy <laughs> to be like, oh yeah, everyone felt this way or like did this or, and that's just not, true like i hope people take away from this time that like you really don't know what the next person is going through because like i think we've like always said that but we've never really like seen how different it can be for different people i'll do some crossword puzzles and uh oh i've gotten back into exercising i found a show on ulu chair yoga for seniors so that's what I've been doing. I've, I've been doing that. Uh, and I've also gotten into Tai Chi. But I still really miss seeing the family. When, when this is all said and done, we're going to meet up and have a big feast. And yeah, I guess very cliche thing. 
but empathy obviously is always, you know, a good takeaway. But I think especially when so many people are suffering and just dealing with different things in different ways. So I think I hope we take away from this time that like, we're all going through something and everyone deserves some sort of compassion or empathy. <laughs>